Oh hey, didn't see you there. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma aka Midsummer Knit Stream and I make videos about knitting and fiber arts content. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys all of my FOs of 2022 and talk a little bit about each one, how much I enjoyed the process, if I liked the pattern, and just give you guys a little rundown on what I did this year. So first off, I did wanna say, if you've already seen my What I Made in the Last Six Months video, which is the first video I ever posted on YouTube, I'm going to be repeating a lot of those items in this video, since obviously I made that video around the middle of 2022, like in the summer, and now I'm just doing everything I made in 2022. So that's going to include those first six months items as well. Um, so if you already have seen that video and you don't want to rewatch me talking about the same pieces, I will give you a timestamp right here as to where you can skip ahead in the video that will include my newer pieces that I didn't talk about in that video. Otherwise, if you want to watch the entire video or you just haven't seen that first video, then let's go ahead and get started. So the first project I completed in 2022 and sort of the most defining project for me as well were the Liesl socks. So I actually don't have these socks right now because they are in the wash and I think that just goes to show that I actually do use them quite a bit and I really love them. Um, but this is a very complex pattern that includes cables and twisted stitches and pretty much every round you're doing some sort of cabling action and it's just like a very engaging project as well as a very beautiful finished object. So as some of you might know, I knitted a lot in my childhood and then I went several years without knitting, basically throughout all of high school and college. But whenever I would visit home, usually for Christmas break or anything of the sort, I would try and complete one small knitted project while I was there. And I guess this project sort of falls into that category. Uh, there were a couple of years after I graduated college in 2020 where I was knitting kind of casually, but not knitting to the extent that I am knitting now. And so the Liesl socks were a project that I started when I was visiting home. Um, I've always been very drawn to Twisted Stitches in particular. My username on Ravelry and my blog name back when I had a knitting blog when I was a bit younger was a Twisted Stitcher because I just loved Twisted Stitches that much. I like that they really pop from the fabric and look super defined and I feel like cables are such a natural pairing with Twisted Stitches for this reason. Um, they just look so good together and so this pattern was obviously one that I was drawn to. And this was a project that took me quite a while. I think I finished in February just because it's a very complex project. So overall, I really love this project. This is one of my favorite projects of this year. It also prompted me to launch my knitting Instagram, which as you guys know, is a very defining moment for me because it, I feel like it was the moment that took me from knitting being this sort of casual hobby that I would do every once in a while to it being more of a sort of serious and committed thing that I was doing. And these socks are really what launched that. Um, it really just got me interested in knitting again and I'm so glad that it did. And I also love the finished object. I wear these all the time even though most of the time that I wear them you can't actually see them because I'm wearing them under jeans. But I especially love to style them with a pair of loafers. I will pop a little picture on the screen of me wearing those with that style but I think it looks really cute. The next thing that I made was the Made You Look Top by Vanessa Fleming. I'm gonna go ahead and include some prying clips here because um, I think it's a little bit hard to see the design in the shirt when I'm not actually wearing it. As you can see though, there's sort of um, a twisted stitch rib, as I mentioned, I love twisted stitches, on the sort of waist of the shirt. And then it increases a bit to go into this sort of bust area. And then at the top it has an I-cord tie, which is sort of holding the entire shirt together. So this was a really enjoyable knit. This is my first time knitting a garment in many years and it went very smoothly because it is a made to measure garment. When I was knitting this, the entire time it just fit like a glove and it still fits like a glove. It really fits me completely perfectly. And that is something that I cannot say for every single knitting pattern that I've done, not to sort of shade other knitting patterns, but I think just the fact that this one is made to measure makes it so that it really does fit you perfectly as long as you get your measurements and your gauge correct, which I did. And so this was a fun knit and I think it came out really cute. The only one small qualm I have with it is that I think I made it a little bit too cropped for my own taste. Um, I was just really excited about getting further on the project and so I switched from the ribbing to the stockinette stitch a little bit earlier than I wish I had. I've actually seen some videos recently about how to sort of extend a top that you made too cropped by accident, even if it's bottom up. So I might try that technique to sort of lengthen this and make it a bit more wearable for me. But I still love this knit. I do wear it pretty often and I think it came out really cute. So up next is my, the one that I want cropped by Lily Kate France. 
I made this in this beautiful bright red hand dyed yarn which I think is so gorgeous and unique. And this top is just such a cool design. So it's actually knit side to side in garter stitch, which just makes for a really interesting project. Um, it's also just very enjoyable the way that the, the design is sort of split up into sections. It sort of makes it addicting to knit because every like 20 or 30 minutes of knitting, you'll be onto a different section and it just makes it really exciting and feel like the progress is going by really quickly. It also has these really gorgeous crochet scallops on the edges, which to be honest, I definitely struggled with as a novice crocheter. I think absolutely if you're a totally beginner crocheter, you can still do this project. Um, I just struggled with it a little bit because I bound off a little bit tightly and so it was very difficult to get my crochet hook into each of these sort of stitches as I was trying to work in each of them. And so that was sort of my biggest struggle with this project. But aside from that, I loved the process of making it. I also love how it came out. This is another one of those projects where I just knit along following these instructions completely and it fit me like a glove. And this has ended up being one of my favorite and most worn FOs of this year. Um, it's just so perfect, it fits me so well. I would say the only slight con to this is that it's a little bit itchy. So I made it in a super wash wool yarn and I kind of wish that I had gone to a yarn store and just picked out a yarn that was a little bit softer, even if it was wool, maybe some sort of merino or something that would just be a little bit more comfortable since this is worn like directly next to the skin. And so I do still wear it really often, but I'll occasionally feel just a little bit itchy in it. But overall, love this design, love this project. Highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a sort of interesting or uniquely constructed crop top. And if you're just looking for any sort of crop top, it is one of my favorite projects I've ever made and I highly recommend it to anyone who is interested. I don't know if I can count this next one as an FO, but I made a little scrunchie to match my made you look top. I had a bit of leftover yarn from that top because I bought two skeins of the cotton yarn I used for it and I only ended up using one. So I have, I still have some leftovers from that project, but I had an entire leftover skein and I wanted to use it to make something small and cute. And the idea of making a scrunchie that would actually match my top came to mind. So I went ahead and did it. It's something that I use a lot in my everyday life. I will normally just throw my hair up into a ponytail or a bun or something while I'm washing my face in the morning. So this is definitely one of my most used knits and I think it's incredibly cute as a very quick gift. It only takes like two or three hours to knit. So I really like this one. My next project was my Sicely blouse. So this was a test knit for the designer who wrote this pattern. Her name is Bronwyn Cannon. And this is such a unique pattern. I love it so much. I love the sheer mohair sleeves that are stock nut stitch contrasted with the um, body that is ribbed and done in just worsted weight yarn. I think it's so cool. I definitely want to do more projects in the future that are sort of working with this contrast between mohair and just a regular wool yarn. I think it looks so cool. And especially using the mohair for the sleeves, it just gives this really ethereal, beautiful look. And I definitely want to do more tops like this in the future that are working with this sort of contrast between textures. Bronwyn also made this such an amazing testing experience. She gave all the testers a lot of time to complete the project, which I definitely needed. And she was just really open to hearing feedback and, um, fostering this really good test knitting environment. So I had a lot of fun making this. I also love how it came out and it was just a great project. So welcome back if you skipped ahead. Um, at this point, I'm going to be showing projects that I made in the last six months, which first of all, you're gonna realize that it's a little bit sparser than my projects in the first six months of 2022 for various reasons, which I can discuss later. But my first project that I completed in this last six months of the year, you're probably all a little bit sick of hearing about, but it is my groovy tank. So this is a project that I designed myself. This is my first ever attempt at a garment design. And it is done in fingering weight yarn and size US1 needles, which is a large part of why I don't have as many FOs for the last part of the year. Um, it's just, I was taking on projects that took quite a bit longer. Not to mention, since this was my own design, I ended up frogging it and redoing it around three times. And so it just took a little bit longer to actually get done with this project. I think it ended up taking me around five or six months to actually complete it. Um, although a large portion of that time I wasn't really actively working on it. But basically it has this bust design of sort of columns of ribbing that are coming out from this central bust stitch. And then it has this sweetheart neckline, which I love this neckline so much. 
I definitely want to make more knit garments that have a neckline like this because I think it just looks really flattering and beautiful. And I'm still working on the pattern for this design. I know I posted about it ages ago talking about how I was working on the pattern, but I am still working on it. I'm actually knitting up a second sort of version of this pattern right now and working on getting it out. So I'm really hoping to get test knitters and start the process of releasing this design early next year. So next up we have my last FO of the year so far. With that being said, I haven't had too many FOs in the last couple of months um, because I've been working on some different various things that are taking a while. I will share those as well. Um, just basically the project that I've been working on towards the end of the year, even though I haven't quite completed them yet. But this last FO that I completed this year is actually a crochet project. So basically I have known how to knit my entire life. I learned at age six from my mom. And for that reason, it has always felt pretty natural for me. I've just felt like I've known how to knit my entire life. Um, crocheting has not, that has not really been the case. I've known the basics of crochet for as long as I can remember, as in how to single crochet, but really nothing beyond that. And whenever I've tried to sort of take on crochet projects, it has never gone as well as my knitted projects go. Um, so after I finished the groovy tank, I feel like I just wanted something that would be a little bit of a reset from all of the knitting I've been doing recently and sort of the different projects that I've been struggling with. Because I had been struggling a lot with my projects at that point, um, feeling like I had to frog things multiple times to get the perfect fit and just struggling a bit with everything I've been making. And so I decided to do this crochet granny square halter top, which was just like a complete departure from everything I've ever done. I've never crocheted a granny square before. I just saw this top on Instagram and I thought it looked really cute. And basically it ties around my neck and also behind my back to form a halter top. So this project was actually so much fun. I used yarns from my stash, which it was a great stash buster. It used up multiple different fingering weight yarns that I had left over, and it was just really enjoyable. The process of making these granny squares was really fun. I feel like I improved a lot over the process of making this top, just in terms of my crochet abilities. I got so much faster, and I even learned how to sort of tension my crochet a lot better. So towards the end of the process, I was, knitting, I was crocheting like twice as fast as I was at the beginning, which was really exciting. To be honest, I actually am not completely obsessed with how those turned out. I've talked about this on my channel before, but the fit is really not quite right. Um, it's a little bit loose around my armpits, so I'm a little bit nervous to wear it out in public. And I also have multiple suggestions from people on how to fix this. Um, the most recent suggestion I got was to put a, a bit of elastic thread around and just pull that a little bit tauter and that would really help. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try that soon, but to be honest, I've just been putting it off a little bit. I feel like it's one of those projects where I sort of just got to the finish line and even though there were some small issues with it to the point where I didn't really want to wear it out, I just could not will myself to continue working on it because I just wanted to work on something else and be done with it. So that's sort of where I'm at with this pattern. I will definitely have to sit down one day and work on some different solutions to see if I can get this to a more wearable state. I had a really fun time making it and I hope that I can wear it one day in the future. So I am in a weird spot where my last FO that I completed this year was actually in October. And I've just spent the last couple of months working on projects that take a little bit longer. And so I haven't had any FOs in November or December but I could see both of these being FOs before the end of the year. Today, the day I'm filming is actually December 18th, and I could see both of these being done before December 31st. So first off is my second groovy tank. As you can see, I am pretty far along with this one. I already have completed the bust design, and I'm really close to the point where I'm going to be splitting for the sweetheart neckline and the armpits, which is at that point, you're basically just almost home free. It's going to go really quickly and I'll probably be done in like three days once I pick this back up. I was working on this for quite a bit in November, but I actually set it aside to start working on my Christmas gift for my mom, which I'm gonna show in a minute. Um, but yeah, once I start working on this again, I can totally see it being done in a couple of days. With that being said, there are a couple things that I do wanna kind of try out with this second draft. Um, I want to try a edging on the neckline, which might take a little bit more experimentation. So it may or may not be completely done by the end of the year, but it's in a good spot right now. And I think I'll definitely be done by early January of 2023. And finally, the last project that I want to share, which as I mentioned, is still a work in progress, is this sweater for my mom. So this is a pattern Ayami by Isabel Kramer. As you can see, it has this really gorgeous cabled yoke. It has sort of two different types of cables, this herringbone one, and then it sort of goes into these normal three by three cables. And then these are the herringbone cables again. So I absolutely love the texture on the yoke of the sweater. The rest and what I'm currently working on is just plain old stockinette stitch. So 
I am currently working on the first sleeve. I think I'm getting near the end of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the second sleeve. And I also have to add back in the ribbing at the bottom of the, bus of the sweater, which I haven't quite done yet because it requires a different needle size, which I don't have at the moment. Um, but this one's getting really close to the finish line. I'm trying to finish it for my mom by Christmas, which is coming up rapidly. It's about a week away, but I think I can definitely do it. So this is really exciting. This is actually one of my first gift knits this year. I made a scrunchie for one of my friends for her birthday, but otherwise I've been pretty selfish when it comes to knitting this year and just been knitting a lot of things for myself. So this has been nice to sort of do something different, get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I'm really excited with the progress that I made on it so far. So that is it for my FOs of 2022. I do want to sort of give a little disclaimer, which is that I know I didn't have an insane number of FOs this year. By my count, I think I had seven, but depending on whether I finished those last two projects, I could have also have up to nine. So I really just haven't completed an insane number of projects this year. And I feel like I've seen a lot of knitters and fiber artists who are sharing their work who complete this amount of work basically in a month. Um, with that being said, first of all, I am not trying to bad talk any of those people. It's honestly amazing for them that they're able to be so productive and finish just so many things in a month. I do in some ways wish that I was a faster or more prolific knitter, but with that being said, I feel like there's also not shame in being a little bit of a slower knitter. I'm someone who likes to sort of take my time when it comes to my knits because I am a big perfectionist. So if I see an issue with one of my knits and it's just something that I know I won't be able to get out of my mind, I will totally frog it and redo it, which I know definitely slows me down compared to other people. That and I feel like I can just be a little bit of a slower knitter when it comes to physically knitting compared to other people, especially if they knit in continental style. So I do just want to put this out here and say, yeah, I didn't have an insane number of FOs, but I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. And I don't think you should feel bad for having a fewer number of FOs, especially if you're like me and you're sort of quick to compare yourself to others on social media. I just want to tell you, it's totally okay if you don't have a, an insane number of FOs for this year. Um, life happens sometimes. You can't be as quick or as pro prolific or as productive of a knitter as you want to be, and that is totally okay. Also creating a million things is not really everything that knitting is about. For me, I really enjoy the process of knitting. I enjoy putting time into a project and putting thought into it. For example, my groovy tank. I could have changed a lot of things about that design and made it a lot more quickly, but I really wanted to put that extra thought and care into it and make it um, what I had pictured in my mind. And so that's what I did. And so I want to say there's no shame if you are a knitter who makes a lot of things or if you're a knitter who doesn't make a lot of things. Um, definitely, I think as a knitter who is a little bit slower, a little bit less prolific, I can tend to feel this sense of pressure to make more or to compare myself on social media and sort of feel disappointed that I'm not as productive as some of these other knitters. And that is just something that I want to work harder and let go of more in 2023. I'm really happy with how everything that I knit turned out and I want to be a little bit kinder to myself and be okay with the fact that I'm a little bit of a slower knitter. So that, that is my little spiel on the urge to compare yourself to others on social media and the urge to see knitting as this constant competition when it really just is not. I just want to put that out there that it shouldn't be a competition. We should all be happy with what we created this year and I hope that we can all move towards having a healthier mindset around that in the future as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still here, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, hit the post bell notifications to get notified when I post and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.